Welcome to one of the craziest and the most hilarious trash talking story from Larry Bird when he torched the Atlanta Hawks for 60 points and broke the franchise record. In this video we go back and look at all the NBA players that were involved on this day and they retell the story on the day Larry Bird torched them. He was talking trash, he was getting buckets and he dropped 60 on the Atlanta Hawks and they have some hilarious stories. So I don't want to keep you guys waiting, the one thing I'd love for you to do, if you do enjoy these videos, they do take me a long time to edit, so I'd really appreciate if you guys could hit that like button. Let's aim for 3000 likes for the next episode, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new and enjoy these types of videos, and full credit to all the podcast interviews and clips used in this video, they are on the screen right now and in the description box down below, and I don't want to keep you guys waiting, so I hope you enjoy the video. Man, listen, if you weren't ready to play against Larry, you had a long night. Well, you had the bird night. I had the bird night. Yeah, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was a tough night, man. Kevin McHale got 56. Kevin McHale had 56. I was just in about to ask you, right? Larry Bird I'm breaking your record in New Orleans against Atlanta. Public, he said it public. I'm like, <laughs> oh, like, shit. shit. Not against us, yeah. crazy. And I said, he ain't, he ain't breaking record against us. What? <laughs> you know? Well, he had 60 that game. He had 60 the next night. Damn. You know, the biggest argument that night is, uh, well, you only scored six on me. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but did, you, nobody was guarding Bird, were they? Well, we were trying. You were trying. No. Right through the Larry Bird show. I mean, this was Larry Bird's night. 60 points down in New Orleans. If my memory serves me correct, you were part of the Hawks when Larry Bird went off for those that 60 points and the whole bench went going crazy. And I think Fratello had to find everybody on the bench because Larry was just doing his thing in New Orleans. Could you could you share some of those those stories with us? Because oh, I yeah, mean well, he, he was well. just unbelievable that night. Well, you know what? It, <laughs> it all it all said it was all how it all come about was. McHale had scored 58 points the game before. Kevin McHale on the 3rd of March, 1985, had a 56-point game against the Pistons on Sunday afternoon in Boston. Well, he was at home against Detroit, and, and Kevin was having a great game where he was scoring, you know, obviously a lot of points. It was a game where I had been playing well for a, for a while and really had, had, a, had a flow where the basket looks big. You step on the floor, you go through warm-ups. As soon as the game starts, the basket looks, looks like it increases in size. And believe me, there's enough games where the basket decreases in size. So when it does increase and you're playing well, you really enjoy it. Danny spins away from traffic. No! Short, tapped in McHale. Boy, oh. what an offensive quarter. And the points just kept piling up, and I kept getting the ball in good situations and, um, and scoring it. Chief. McHale. 41 points for Kevin McHale. Back to Kevin. Got it. 49 for McHale. You know, before you knew it, they, uh, I looked up on the board and back in the old garden, they had the, you know, the runner that went in the back there and it said, uh, new Celtic team record. I was like, wow, I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't know that was capable. I thought it was Havlicek and, you know, the great Celtics of old. I thought, how, you know, wow, that's really something. And he had about three or four minutes going to the game and we were up by a, a pretty good margin and he asked the coach to take him out. And Larry came up and said, Hey man, you got to roll and you got to stay in the game. If I get a chance, believe me, I'm not stopping. And so I said, nah, that's all right. And I went over and, and sat down. I happened to be standing there and I told him he better go for 60 because 56 is not enough. That will be broken. It lasted about nine days, as a matter of fact. And uh, yeah, there I go getting 56, feeling pretty good about myself. And uh, towards the end of the game, I said, I'm going to come out. Minute half or two minutes ago in the game, Larry said, were you crazy? I said, no, I'm had enough, man. We're, we're ahead. And he goes, if I get that hot, I'm not stopping. And Larry told McHale, and he publicly put it out there, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm outdo that score. I think Kevin made a big mistake. You should have tried to get 60, 62, because he had plenty of time left. Larry, after the game, kiddingly told Kevin, Kevin, you should have gone for 60. He said, nah, you should have should have kept going, because that may not last. I'm out score you the next time we play. What happened to be against the Atlanta Hawks? Tell about us it. about it, Sneak. T tell us about Larry Bird. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like you have some experience on this topic. <laughs> tell, tell us, tell us. A lot of experience. <laughs> I give you a game. <laughs> I give you a game. 
Well, Kevin McHale scored 57 one night. So Bird said, I'm going to break your record against Atlanta. Yeah. I'm like, won't get 55 not here, you know. Well, in New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans. Uh, <laughs> and you were playing the Hawks, and it was one yes. of those times they were playing some home games down in New Orleans. And it was in a neutral site, and I know that Larry was always telling the ball boys, uh, hey, go find out the scoring record. As he was getting taped on the tape table, he would always say, hey, go, go find out the, the scoring record in this gym. Hell, it was a week or 10 days later, we're down in New Orleans, and he just got on fire. I walked on the court, and we're playing the Celtics. And he tells me, hey, big fella, you're in a little trouble tonight. Well, I was coming from Italy. I had a pretty good season, so I'm like, who does he think he's talking to? I'm the big dog. He, I, he don't get this. So he made a few moves. I stole the ball from him. I went down, took off, dunked on his head hard. Boom. Dunk. Oh, and yes. jam. Yeah, he has some talent. I mean, he's way up. Came down another one. Boom. Taken away by Antoine Carr. Carr can really handle it. Three on two. Carr all the way. Whoa. He jams. Antoine <laughs> Carr. Yeah, baby Hawks, baby Hawks, my behind. You, we, you in trouble. And I'm running my mouth, which I shouldn't have done. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I got him fired up. And then Dominique obviously got him fired up. I ain't never seen anybody like him that not super athletic, but he beat you in so He's many so smart. ways. Yeah. Larry just decided, oh, that's it. I'm finna light this whole team up. Left corner, down low for Bird with position. He fakes it and shoots it good. Uh. And Dennis Johnson misses a shot, rebound Bird. Bird on the baseline, oh. great pass. Larry, that game was unbelievable. Just absolutely unbelievable. Dominique guarded him. Back then, you had to guard each other. Cliff guarded him. Antoine guarded him. You don't play around. Everybody, I guarded him. I guarded him. Uh, nothing worked. DJ in the lane, Bird the fall away is good. Uh. You were so relaxed when you played basketball. There was something about you. You just enjoyed playing basketball. I knew that. But you like to talk, you know, you talk some trash. A lot of people don't realize Larry was a big trash talker because a lot of people back then, there was no social media. So you just saw what he would produce and you would see the stats, you know, in the paper. But man, Larry would, would talk some trash and then back it up and tell you exactly what he's going to do and then do it right on you. Huh? Well, see, that's why I say it's not trash talking. Because he's actually doing it to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's letting you have it. Up high is Parrish. Off to Bird for the open 20-footer. It's good. Left wing, Wedman down low, Bird. He gets away from the steal. The layup is good. Right corner, Bird. Backs in. Posted up, Bird. Takes the jumper and hits it. When a guy is literally coming up to court calling his shots, uh, and, you know, Bird talked a lot of trash. Uh, um, we're on the free throw line, and he's like, he literally says, um, this next play, when we come out, left side, <laughs> over uh, across the three. In this spot, and I'm going to bust you right in your face. <laughs> right? And you come out, that spot, shoot, game yeah. over. And you're listening to him, that's that's a tough filler. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and so um, it was a bad night. And just, just super smart basketball. But he had a heart of a lion. He had a heart of a lion, man. Mm, yeah. Forget about his scoring attributes and his IQ, his toughness, competitiveness was unmatched. Bird posted left, takes the jumper and hits it again. Ray Williams down low for Bird, who feels it and takes it and uh, drills it again. He's unbelievable. Five remaining in the third. Bird for the bomb. Got it again, a three-pointer. You're seeing the greatest in the game, Larry Bird. I mean, everybody was entertained by this. Even, even on the five. guys on That's the Atlanta, a, the guys got, on the Atlanta they bench. They got five for that. I heard. Yeah. Watch this. Watch they the reactions five. on the Atlanta bench. <laughs> you see Scotty the Hastings put them yeah. here. When you get now watch, close. watch Cliff Levingston Come on. over here. I think yeah, this is Cliff. Are you kidding me? <laughs> He makes a jump shot, and the Atlantic players are high-fiving each other like, man, this guy's so hot. Johnson, a lead for Bird. They want him to, they want him to keep scoring, too. Bird takes the jumper oh. and hits it again. Bird has 54. He was so hot that he was shooting threes with his left hand. <laughs> I'm like... He would tell you he's going to shoot the ball off the, off the glass on the right side. And you know, I'm guarding him like, the hell if you are, I'm on him like glue. Like he owed me, he owed me twenty dollars. I'm, I'm following him everywhere. He went down and set a down screen, set a cross screen, set a back screen. I said, like, okay, whew. 
He's away from the place I ain't worried about. Next thing you know, I get a back screen. I'm saying, I'm fighting over the back screen, trying to get there. He gets the ball. He looks at me. Too late. Shoots out the glass. <laughs> I mean, Larry was 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 one of he was one of those guys who who was was slow, but you know what? He knew how to play the game before you even got got to him. And that was then, a game that everybody was just jumping off. Yeah, the I'll bet you was celebrating. <laughs> you know, I ain't never seen that. I think Bird oh. went by the bench one time too. He fell in the bench. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he, <laughs> and he called that one. Well, it was one play that um, that Antoine Carr was guarding him, and Antoine let him get get the ball. And he goes to make a move, and I'm thinking, I've got to stop him. And he was shooting the three, and Antoine ran at him hard. I got a few fouls, so I formed him. Fouled him. He's falling down. He shoots that shot and he hollers, money. He literally said, oh, no. uh, off the glass into the trainer. He called it. Uh, he said, rainbow uh, trainer's lap. He fell into our trainer's lap. It was an N1 three point shot. And all t players was cheering for him. And Bird falls into Joe O'Toole. Larry Bird. <laughs> well, he made the shot so well that it's like he almost dunked on me because the ball went down through the net and you hit that pow. That's when I got off the bench. I'm waving the towel, slapping the other high fives down the bench, and we having a good time. And I'm like, okay. I ran over, picked him up, said, hey, you a bad boy. <laughs> um, and, I'm, and I'm never talking stuff again. <laughs> Dennis Johnson. Bird is on the baseline coming out right. There's Bird. Bird, 14 seconds. He got fouled. He hit the shot. They're not going to count it. And Bird falls into Joe O'Toole. They're not going to count it. And I guess the one shot that you'd love to have him have counted was that three point job you threw in going out of bounds. I think that was a tough shot all night. And, uh, <laughs> It looked like it was going in, but you never know from that distance. And when you got it rolling and you shoot the ball on, on line, it's usually going to go in. And, and I thought that one probably should have counted, but I don't know. Eric. I made sure every one of them get fined $3,000. As Peace. you should. Find all them idiots right there, <laughs> you know, for GM, for him. Antoine Carr and Cliff Levingston got fined by Fratello, I think. For... And, and Eddie Johnson for celebrating. So uh, Fratello told me, Ricky Brown, Sly Williams, uh, Eddie Johnson, to meet in uh, his room after we get out, you know, if we get settled in our, our room, come up to his room, um, and and we went up there. He had the game on. We sit on the couch, help on each other like what happened. Just wait, look at that, look at that. Mike Patel said, "Man, look at him. He's kicking our tail, just wearing us out." And you guys on the bench high fiving each other, celebrating Bird. Yeah, it was the best film session. Every time I see, when I see Mike, we still laugh. God, it's it was so a, good. it was the greatest film session ever because at, back then you didn't have you know you watched the real game and just went you know with a video and Mike rewound the celebration twenty times. He just kept re not the shot. He just kept rewinding it, showing the guys. You remember they're giving each other high five. And then and then somebody falls off the bench. Yeah, too. that was Eddie Johnson. Yeah. Eddie Johnson falls off the bench in laughter. Uh, and Antoine Carr and Cliff gives each other a high five. And our film session was 20 <laughs> minutes of that. And you guys on the bench high fiving each other. That's going to cost each one of you guys $100. And Fratello wouldn't let it go. It just kept rewinding. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I left out of the room and said, That's the best $100 seat I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, coach. You know, it's almost like they bought a ticket to the game. Man, I couldn't believe it, man. They got fined $3,000, yes. right? Yes. Now, we watching the film the next day, and we, you know, we looking at everybody. Now, Fratello fined everybody $3,000, but what y'all didn't see was he was sitting down like, you know what? Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, you should have filed for Tello ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Can you call a double team? <laughs> Can't you get out his hands, coach? But even the, the coach. even but, the coach was like, "Ooh." I, and let's show you how hot he was. Larry, you know, put on a show that night, and I mean, just to get the whole Atlanta bench going crazy uh, on some of the shots that he was making down the stretch was a pretty good indication. I'm not sure I've ever seen that before. Larry was he was a phenomenon. You know, he was, man, he, he was an amazing competitor. He was 
He was something else, man. And he's he like, hey, 6'10". I mean, great passer, great rebounder, unbelievable score. Bird, the fall away, tough shot, and he drills it again. Up his toe, right corner, Bird, bomb, good. He hurt his toe. Doc Rivers back in. Bird. They open the right side. Bird, the fall away. He oh. drills it again. Oh. That's the best shooting I've ever seen in the yes, game. Yes, indeed. One more basket will tie the record. McHale set for most points by a Celtic in one game. And McHale didn't set it more than a week ago. And he makes these two foul shots. He will tie McHale for most points ever by a Boston individual in a game. Isn't that an amazing coincidence? Well, he's had 56 before. Larry Bird has. Bird has 55. He can tie the record with 56. Amazing. He does. Oh, it taught me when you got guys like him, Michael Jordan, those guys that have that that next gear. Don't get them started. <laughs> Yo, Vince, if, if, if somebody on my team did that, Larry's like, I'm not giving it up. Oh, oh man. Oh. He went for 60. Oh. Yeah, right there he told me. I, right there he looked at me and said, I told you I wasn't stopping. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, yeah, no, yeah. But we, what, we're, at him, yeah. Uh, what we're doing at the end of the game, we we're trying to get him the ball. He just said, keep on going, Larry. But the funny thing was, he was shooting, and I happened to notice the Hawks players on the bench. They had towels over their heads and stuff like that. So, we're, you know, when a guy gets that hot and you're his teammate, all you can do is laugh. I mean, it's just it's hilarious. He's taking the worst shot. He shot one one-on-five on that clip, that <laughs> moon ball. Like, he, he would never shoot a one-on-five shot. He was thinking about winning. Like, that, that shot's one on five. Look at, uh, look at you know, this I, is the best. Watch, watch when the guy throws oh, a towel up over his head. Watch it. I think it's Scotty Hastings. <laughs> Man, are you telling me? And, then, and this one with watch, watch good news, Cliff Levington over here. <laughs> That's definitely fine. Yo, you would be fine on my team doing that. Oh, Bird will try another jumper and hit it at the buzzer. Bird has 60 points. Larry Bird scored 60 points. Look at the Boston players mob him. Larry Bird scored 60. It is the greatest shooting exhibition I've ever seen in my life. Larry Bird. One more impossible shot after the other. You played intense, but you you were just really, where did you get that from? Just I have no idea. Kevin, I was so nervous before them games. I couldn't wait till they started. But once I stepped on the court, yeah. go shoot layups, everything just calmed down. Um, I mean, I was very fortunate that that happened. Uh, you know, there's games out there, Kevin, I tell people, and they don't believe me, but we'd be playing really well. And, and the press always says, what would you think when you made it? I wasn't thinking. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking about my grandmother, <laughs> wondering what she's doing today. I was yeah. totally out of that arena. I was just playing by feel and yeah. flow. And and uh, people don't understand that, but that's how I did. A lot of times, my, you know, we run a play. I knew what the play was, but my mind might be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, they, they talk about them zones that people get in that uh, fortunately we got into some, you know, as we get going. And uh, my mind was so far away from basketball yeah. and that happens and, and it's just, it's unreal and, and it don't make a lot of sense, but it's the truth. Well, I like to win too. Yeah. I like the outcome when you win. There's nothing better going on the road. I don't care who you're playing to get that win on the road. Yeah. You know, we always felt we were going to win at home, but going on the road, beating anyone, you know, us getting on that bus and, and talking about the game, and I always thought that was the greatest. And let me know down below in the comment section what you thought of this video. If you did enjoy it, please help me out by hitting that like button. Subscribe if you're new for more videos just like this one. Here are two new videos I think you will also enjoy. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Keep on moving on.